Hey, there you are. You like fell asleep like the moment we got on the plane. Yeah, there's been a delay with boarding and everything else, but we're already. Yeah, there was a long delay sitting there on the runway, so no wonder you fell asleep. Do you not feel very good? Hmm. Okay. Well, let me know. Um, they actually did come by because of the delay. They came by and brought snacks. So, you want to have your drink? I... It's a shared drink. I got, I got them to give us a big one to share, if that's okay. Okay. Actually, there's another one if you want. Yeah. Okay, I thought we might want to try both flavors. Yeah, sure, here you go. <laughs> yep. And then, um, I actually brought snacks since they didn't offer us snacks. So, if you want some of these, let me see sense. I know you like your ASMR. But, chia seeds. Apparently, I did a research project on them a couple years ago. Apparently, the Aztecs um, thought that you could go, a warrior could go like a, a whole day on just a spoonful of them because they're so full of energy. But, uh, I mean, there's some good evidence for them. There were a couple studies um, about them in, uh, in, I mean, you can go on PubMed.gov. There's stuff about diabetes and changing inflammatory stuff. Good stuff. Yep. So, yeah, let's, um, I can, yeah, absolutely take a look and, and if you like to read the safety manual, I'll let you do that. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be a long flight, but I'm glad to be taking this trip with you. I think that, um, I don't know, just makes it better, makes it less miserable, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I guess this is a 737-700. Yep. That's right, you did actually miss the safety talk. So I guess you have to go over it. We can talk about it together if it's something you're worried about. Yeah. The exit routes. Easy enough, right? One's on the wing. And how to put on your seatbelt, which you kind of already know, that's easy enough. It's an interesting arrow they have. Look at that guy, he looks really miserable and scared. I think because the thing is almost, the laptop's going to fall on him. <laughs> Poor guy. Rafts in this plane are up in the top. I always forget to pay attention to that. So I guess somebody's job would be to get the rafts out. So yeah, they're over there, I guess. I don't actually see how to pull them out, do you? I don't know, maybe a flight attendant would show that. Assuming they were all alive. And then it shows you how to put them on. I always think these are interesting um, superhero ethics questions, right? Like the stuff about helping yourself so that you can help others, right? Because if you don't put your oxygen mask on first, you're going to pass out and you're not going to be able to help someone else. There is enough oxygen for everybody, so it's not like that's a selfish thing to do. It's not like you're, um, you know, taking the oxygen 
oxygen. It would be one thing if there's like only one oxygen tank and then of course you give it to the other person, that's the hero thing to do. But otherwise, all things being equal, resources being equal, and I like how they say look first, pull, and then pull out. Um, look first, and you open the door, sliding it to the side like that. I know he looks like he's waving out the window, doesn't he? <laughs> then he goes and opens the door. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all things being equal, if you don't take care of your own health, um, how are you going to be able to take care of other people? So, don't bring stuff with you. Although, I guess, I think if you had something that was going to change the world, maybe you should, but I don't. Probably not. Probably you'll kill someone else by not bringing stuff with you. I think that's a good reason to have a window seat, because then you're going to be the last out. And you won't be killing someone else if you bring something with you. So, when they have them out there, I guess they're all in the water already. Mooring line release. That's how to get it off. That's important so that the raft doesn't get dragged down with the plane if the plane is sinking. That's really important. I like the shape of these big yellow rafts. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, um, do not open the exits if you see fire. If the window is already underwater, then don't open it and make it worse, <laughs> I guess is what they're saying. I don't really understand that one. Yeah, if water is above the sill, because you'll flood the plane and make it sink faster, and that's not helpful. So, yeah. But yeah, that's why I designed the um, kind of wellness project program that I designed. Is um, This is the principle I was talking about, the oxygen mask principle, right? It's because I think I want people to be able to help other people, and I think they can best do that if they optimize their wellness individually, depending on what their particular needs are. Because you may have like chronic illness like me, but that doesn't mean you can't achieve things, it just means you have to figure out your own pace and study how things work for you. If you are seated in a row of seats having direct access to an overweight exit, locate the emergency exit, comprehend the instructions, Operate the emergency exit, follow oral directions, blah, blah, blah. Slow or secure the emergency exit window so it won't impede use of the exit. Pass expeditiously through the emergency exit. You have to have enough strength to reach upwards, sideways, and downwards to the location of the emergency exit. Grasp, pull, turn out the rest of the manipulating mechanisms by shove, pull, or otherwise open the emergency exit. Lift, hold, deposit on your seats, move, 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 seat backs to the next row. You're gonna fall asleep by now. A passenger seat and an exit seat must be 15 years old or older. Have the capacity to perform the applicable functions without the assistance of a adult companion. Have the ability to read and understand the instructions related to emergency evacuation. So, provided by the airline. This is not the airline. We are on a non Southwest Airlines because Southwest Airlines is not great. We'll see. I have a claim with them regarding being denied a plane because of um, disability and service animals. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if they if they meet it satisfactorily and they do what they said they do, which is refund, then I won't be too upset. So I don't want to say too much trash about them yet, but because um, they might, you know, it might have been miscommunication and that's fine. But, um, yeah, so I'm not talking trash on them yet. I haven't appreciated their <laughs> service, so we're gonna pretend this is not Southwest Airlines. I mean, it is, but I'm here with you, and that makes it better, doesn't it? So it's it's as if, <laughs> yeah, it's as if. So, but yeah, so the Wellness Project kind of conversation. Um, if you want to get it. I do, you know, have it available. It is pay what you want um, and what you believe your health is worth um, because you should figure out, and I mean, it's not going to hurt you to not, you know, it's not, it's not going to hurt you to get it. It could change your life to get it. 
Um, I mean, that's the difference between self-care, like, you know, you could get self-care like an alcoholic beverage, or you could get self-care like, are you, are you feeling nauseous? Do you need to throw up? <laughs> or you can get self-care like um, things that'll actually improve your energy and wellness, and I, that's, you know, what's the risk of doing that? So yeah, I'll lean back so you can see outside, yet it's really quite, quite lovely. But you're not feeling well. Let me take a look at you. Um, talk to me a little bit. What, what's going on? I'll just kind of turn towards you a little bit here in my seat. There's enough room. Don't worry about it. What's happening? Just some nausea? Well, I have a couple things here that you can try for that. Um, so one, let me just kind of go through my gear here. I always have a trusty doctor bag. I don't always have them, that's not true, but I usually have it. So I have some Dramamine here, if you would like. Yeah, you can take that, that's not a problem. Yeah, and then I also have some Ginger and Peppermint and B6. So you can kind of pick your poison. So B6 is used a lot for women in pregnancy who are feeling particularly nauseous, um, who can't have some, you know, kind of other medications. It's, that's a good one. So you want some B6? Yeah, here you go. Easy to stock up on. You can get it over the counter. And then, like I said, here's the Dramamine. And then the, um, the other thing, oh ginger, you can actually get ginger pills, but it's obviously better to get fresh ginger. I only have the pills here. Yeah, here you go, you can have that one. And then the last thing is peppermint oil. Now peppermint oil we can put in like tea. Um, I don't actually have oil, I have peppermint tea. Uh, we can ask them for hot water. Yeah. Well, what I have is a peppermint ginger green tea. So it's got the green, which gives you a little bit of energy and antioxidation. And there was a recent study in China um, that found in older adults that green tea even helped to reduce depression. And again, I'm not promising to cure anyone's depression with tea, but um, I think that's awesome that it helped to, in that study, it helped to reduce their depressive symptoms. And then um, the, it obviously has the ginger for nausea and the peppermint for nausea. And since you like ASMR, those are good things for like tingly, you know, ASMR type stuff. It's actually right down there. Yeah. Well, because I stock it in the Tingle tea, Tingles Tea Store. That's tinglestea.bygenfinelli.com. I have peppermint ginger green there. But we have some right here. Yeah. I, we can ask them for some hot water. Yeah. Um, so I actually went ahead and asked them for hot water already because I thought that you might need it. So <laughs> let me um let me just pour it in here for you. Okay, there you go. Let it steep for a little bit on your seat and that'll, that'll be good. So those things all help with nausea. Um, sometimes what I like to do to help with some of the misery of a plane ride, because they make me feel very sick, um, they didn't used to, but since the fibromyalgia, I get intense pain on plane rides with the pressure changes, and I feel so fatigued and yucky. Um, it's just, it's really miserable, so I, I hate plane rides, um, which I didn't, which sucks because, you know, world traveling science fiction author and physician have to travel to maintain that title. <laughs> so, does my hair look silly? It's really long and I haven't figured out what to do about it yet. Your hair's looking really good, is it okay if I touch? I just want to push this. We do have a lovely hair. Your hair is really great. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump your hair about there. Yeah. 
You're looking good, by the way. Not a disaster mess like me. <laughs> um, but yeah, take those. That helps with nausea some. And like I was saying, to deal with the misery of being on a plane, um, I think it can be helpful sometimes to take Benadryl just to kind of knock out. Um, obviously, it's not so great if you have a lot of uh, flight transfers and layovers because then you're exhausted trying to navigate the, the gates. But if you have a long flight, just Benadryl it up, son. Like, mm, you know, why not? Let's see. Um, you can do melatonin also. Those things can really help you prevent jet lag. Yeah, so what you do is you calculate, hey, I'm going to, um, oh, how do I know all these things? Well, I, I am a physician, you know that. <laughs> An actual physician. Um, this is an unofficial medical visit of any kind, um, you know, because disclaimers are important and also you may have individual health issues that I don't know about, so everybody's different, everyone's body is different, but this is some general information and education. Yeah. But for jet lag, um, if you figure out the time zone that you're going to, and you do Benadryl and melatonin to sync up that time zone, right, to put yourself to sleep, like say you know that you're gonna get there, like you're going to Japan, and you know that you're gonna get there in their morning, which would be your night. So then you should take caffeine. Um, well, so it's their morning, but your night. So you should take the Benadryl and the melatonin eight hours before you land. So you're gonna land at like six in the morning in Japan, um, which would be, you will feel like you should be going to sleep at that time. So what you do is eight hours before during the flight, you give yourself Benadryl and melatonin so that you are sleepy and you should do that about half an hour before time to go to sleep so really eight and a half to nine hours before your morning landing at 6 a.m. right take Benadryl and melatonin put yourself to sleep um, and that way when you arrive you will have had that night that kind of forced night's sleep and you can really help reduce jet lag that way um, obviously it's the opposite if like you're gonna arrive at their night and like say you're arriving at you know 10 at night and you're gonna need to be sleepy and it would normally be your day right like if you're in England or the US or something like that it would have been your day and so um, then you need to take caffeine and things to keep you awake during their day so just as soon as you get into the airport look up their time schedule and adjust your body chemically to meet that time schedule uh, and that can really help with jet lag it can make a big difference because jet lag is the worst it sucks um the other thing is upping your immune system before you travel because it is so miserable sometimes i find that it helps a little bit to rub um like if you're feeling stressed here and here and then um not here that's not correct um here for like nausea here also here here and here so i can just kind of it's not so much for nausea as for the stress it's just kind of help you rest as you're getting and you know a little head massage not hurt that we're so good friends but anyway travel diseases last time i traveled just in arizona and i'm fully vaccinated i still got you know you know what yep the old 19 and that was terrible and i felt super sick and miserable and you know what i wish i had done i wish that i had worn a mask on the airplane even though that's maybe a little weird and makes people think i'm not vaccinated or something like wearing a mask on the airplane would have made a difference and I wish that I had taken immune system uppers on my way. Yeah, like um, echinacea or elderberry. There isn't, I haven't seen a ton of evidence for, for elderberry or echinacea, um, like, but I also haven't checked. I just know, because I know my herbal folk remedies, I know they're traditionally used as immune system uppers. Actually, I do have my laptop here. What you can do anytime you want to check a um, herbal 
you can go and you know see what kind of studies there are for it um, you can go to pubmed.gov and here we go here is evidence-based this is an article in the journal of evidence-based complementary alternative medicine in 2018 it's a large review where they spend some time looking at the studies that have been available for immune system boosting. Um, this review included 82 eligible studies to consider the preventative role of certain nutrients in immune clusters and in, you know, helping prevent things like the common cold, which is where the old 19 evolved from. Um, so regarding um, vitamin C, regular supplementation um, has shown that vitamin C reduces the duration and the severity of common colds. Um, and there's varying studies on that. There's also studies that they're not mentioning here, but there's also studies that show that it made no difference. Um, but helping the duration could, you know, could be a good thing. Um, considering zinc, there's good evidence for that. The supplementation may shorten the duration of colds by approximately 33%. Um, so patients can be instructed to try zinc within 24 hours of onset of symptoms. Um, patients with vitamin D deficiency and those not receiving bolus experienced um, the most benefit from adding on, you know, vitamin D, depending on your age. Um, echinacea, prophylactic treatment with this extract, 2,400 milligrams a day over four months appear to be beneficial for treating or preventing the common cold. Um, so it's very interesting. People can try it, but there are a lot of further studies needed on the topic. Um, so you can actually read the whole review article. It is available as free full text um, from PubMed Central. And it is in a peer-reviewed, um, researched, you know, medical journal. Um, again, it, it's called, this particular article was published in 2018, Evidence-Based Complementary Alternative Medicine. is called Self-Care for Common Colds, the Pivotal Role of Vitamin D, Vitamin C, Zinc, and Echinacea, and Three Main Immune Interactive Clusters, right? So the idea being, if those things can help boost and support your immune system, none of them cure or treat viral illnesses. Um, someone who tells you that is not is misspeaking i don't want to say they're lying they might just be misspeaking but um you know those kind of things uh but the idea is if it can help to improve someone should be wearing a mask or traveling or being careful when they're traveling <laughs> you see what i'm saying like um if you can take something that is helping to change duration of symptoms for something as simple as a cold virus, then, you know, probably the idea is, since viruses are really only fought by your immune system, um, unless you have certain antivirals, and there are not antivirals for the vast majority of viruses, um, so then what those uh, things are really doing is helping, helping to boost your immune system. So, uh, yeah, we could go into way more depth about it. Um, and things like elderberry, right? There's another, um, so that was a 22, 2018 article. There is another one in, I think, the British Medical Journal, um, or BMC, Complementary Medicine and Therapies in 2021, which was a systemic review of elderberry for prevention and treatment of viral respiratory illnesses. Um, and they kind of look at, they did a systematic review and searched six databases. Um, with two different studies, they searched screen 1,187 records and included five randomized trials on elderberry for the treatment or prevention of viral respiratory illness. Um, they didn't find any studies linking elderberry to clinical inflammatory outcomes, but they did find three studies measuring production of cytokines ex vivo after ingestion of elderberry. Um, so it may not reduce the risk of developing the common cold. It may reduce the duration and severity of colds, but evidence is uncertain. It may reduce the duration of influenza, but evidence is uncertain. Um, and compared to like Ocetelmavir, um, something with elderberry may be associated with a lower risk of influenza complications. Um, it does have some effect on inflammatory markers. Um, one small study compared elderberry to diclofenac and provided some evidence that it was as effective or less effective um, in than diclofenac and cytokine reduction over time. So it may be a safe option to kind of add 
Um, there's no evidence that it overstimulates the immune system. Evidence on everything else is um, uncertain. So that is according to this systemic review, and I like it because they really lay out what their um, what their concerns are and how their methods are. There was another article in 2019 in the Journal of Complementary Therapies in Medicine, which was a meta-analysis um, that had included a total of 180 patients and found that, um, you know, uh, elderberry might be a good alternative to antibiotic misuse for upper respiratory symptoms because sometimes people who have a viral infection will try to take an antibiotic and actually that'll make you worse. Um, and a potentially safer alternative to prescription drugs for, for some things, right? For certain symptoms, um, like upper respiratory infection symptoms. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, so it can't hurt unless you're allergic, right? It can't hurt to try elderberry and echinacea because unlike ginkgo or some of the other more dangerous supplements, um, they don't have side effects of harm, right? Ginkgo can make you bleed out. Um, St. John's wort can make you have severe serotonin syndrome, um, especially if you're taking it with something else. And you can, if you take it with a prescription medication and you don't know about the interaction, you didn't tell your doctor, you, St. John's wort can actually kill you. Um, so there are a lot of herbals that have dangerous side effects. Um, but elderberry and echinacea um, in the normal doses that they're given, not so much. So it's something that you can try. Um, same with like zinc, you want to be careful not to overdose. Um, but zinc, vitamin C, you can't overdose. Vitamin D, it's almost impossible to overdose. So all of those kind of things, it's helpful. And I wish that I had supplemented with them before I flew to Arizona um, a couple weeks ago because that and wearing a mask, I think, would have been helpful because I washed my hands a lot and I didn't touch anyone, uh, but <sighs> travel is yucky and disgusting. Um, the lady next to me on the plane to Arizona was very clever and she took a wipe and wiped down everything on the plane that she was sitting next to and I wish I had done that also. Um, that that would have been good. So. Um, you know, because even being vaccinated, I had, it was not fun. I really didn't enjoy, you know, the, the, the 19. <laughs> I felt really miserable. Um, it was really painful and I thought I was having a fibro flare, but it was the fibro flare. Because <laughs> fibro flares are not contagious. <laughs> so, yeah. So those are things that you can try when you're traveling. Um, yeah, so I do travel medicine and herbal medicine consultations actually. So if you are traveling anywhere and you are curious, um, healthcare.bygenfinelli.com. I do both travel and herbal consultations so I can help you find more in-depth research. Not like what we just did, where we just kind of did some quick thinking, but like really digging and looking into your past medical history and figuring out like, kind of, you know, if you have a question about this health claim, I can help you research it and see, would this really be a good herbal for you? Because um, sometimes herbals are like food, right? Like green tea is a drink, right? It's not going to cure your cancer or your depression but it certainly can help to have a healthy immune system and a healthy mind, and if it reduces depressive symptoms, it, like this is a really neat study, um, and again, you can just look that up on PubMed, depressive symptoms, T, Chinese adults, and you'll find it was a recent study. Um, like, if we can prevent, if we can reduce symptoms, if we can do things so that we don't have to deal with the terrible medical costs of our unhealthy lifestyles, that would be good. So, yep. So yeah, hit me up, healthcare.bygenfinelli.com. <laughs> I've mentioned a couple of things, haven't I? Yeah. Let me, um, let me just kind of listen to your belly and, uh, pat your, like, let me just kind of take a look since you're feeling a little bit nauseous anyway, right?
it's not a big deal. Not a big deal, just a small little thing. Okay, let me just wash my hands here. I have some hand sanitizer with me. One should always bring hand sanitizer with oneself, but sometimes one forgets. <laughs> I'm just gonna listen to your belly here, okay? Just in this quadrant, and then in this quadrant, and then in this quadrant, and then over here in this quadrant. Excellent. Okay. What I'm gonna do next is called percussion. This is where I tap on your belly, okay? I'm tapping on my fingers, like that, but what I'm doing is tapping. That helps me to hear sounds in your belly. Okay, I'm gonna tap over here, over your ribs. Just trying to measure your liver size. I can tell if you're an alcoholic or not by this. Or if you have fatty liver disease. <laughs> I can tell if you've been naughty. <laughs> There's another way to tell if you've been naughty. I'm gonna try, it's a little hard sitting up, I'm gonna try to capture your spleen. <laughs> yeah, just deep breath in. A little squeeze here on your side. That's good. I shouldn't be able to feel your spleen. If I can feel your spleen, then it's enlarged and it doesn't necessarily mean the naughty you could have a genetic thing um there could be something else going on but in a large spleen uh like after changing kissing partners um could indicate you know oh you've been around a little bit you have some mono <laughs> i am just teasing um but you can you 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 should be careful because if you get mono and you have an enlarged spleen then you shouldn't be engaging in the hardcore sports and so forth because they can your spleen can burst from a, like if, like if a footballer whacks you or something. Yeah, so you gotta gotta take care of yourself. So I'm going to push in your belly here on this side, and I want you to take a deep breath. Okay, deep breath in and out. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm looking for what's called Murphy's sign there. I'm looking for your gallbladder see if there's anything wrong with it. And then here, I'm just gonna kind of push in in this lower right hand quadrant. Mm -hmm. And release. Okay, I'm gonna you tap your foot on the floor for me. Good. All right, so that that's good. That's all good stuff. Can you lift your knee up to your chest? It's an easy way rather than me manipulating your body for me to kind of check. Try to touch the opposite chest with your knee, like, right knee to left breast. Okay. That tells us good. I mean, your, your tummy's doing really good. So no emergency signs, right? We don't have any emergency signs. Are the things starting to kick in now? Okay, good. That should help. That should help. All right. Well, um, yeah. Rest well. Try to, try to get, take a nap. Would you like some Benadryl? Yeah melatonin instead. I don't know if you want to be taking melatonin during the... Well, yeah, it's almost evening. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. There you go. Alrighty. <laughs>